This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit Sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we'll show you how to sew a box X stitch in webbing. We'll also share the formula in determining how much sewing is required to achieve a desired breaking strength. A box X stitch is used when the webbing could be loaded in multiple directions. Stitches are made both parallel and perpendicular to the axis of the webbing, so a load in either direction will be well distributed. The box X stitch that we will show in this video was sent to an independent facility to be brake tested. Using the formula in this video, it was built to withstand up to 1,600 pounds of force. So, let's find out. That broke the stitching, 8.1 kilonewtons. That is not 8,100 pounds or 1,800 pounds of force. We surpassed our goal of 1,600 pounds as the sewing broke at 1,800 pounds. Multiple sewing tests were performed and the formula continued to meet or surpass expectations. Here is the formula. Usually, 8 to 12 stitches per inch is what's generally recommended for sewing webbing. We will use 8 stitches per inch and multiply that by the thread strength. We're using Sayerite's V92 polyester thread which has a breaking strength of 15 pounds. Then we will multiply that by the average loop strength for the lock stitch sewing machine which is 1.5. This equals the seam strength in pounds per inch of sewing. And now take the manufacturer's breaking strength of the webbing you're using, or your desired breaking strength, and divide it by the seam strength per inch of sewing. This equals the required inches of sewing that you need to make in your webbing. Now that we have the formula for the stitch breakage out of the way, let's go ahead and show you how to sew a box X stitch. To keep the ends of the webbing from unraveling, we're going to use the Sayrite Edge Hot Knife. If you don't have this, you can use a lighter carefully to seal the end of the webbing. To base the webbing together prior to sewing, we use seam stick for canvas, which is a double-sided tape. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then we base the loop of webbing together. Now we are assured that the webbing will not move when we take it to the sewing machine to sew. A box X stitch will have eight sewn legs. It can be squarish in shape or rectangular. The stitch will typically start an eighth inch from the edges of the webbing. Since our webbing is one inches wide, we know that our double rows at the left and the right of our box X stitch are three quarter inches long. So, 0.75 times four equals three inches. Then 8.8 .8 minus 3 equals 5.8. 5.8 divided by 4 equals 1.45 inches. That means our vertical legs need to be at least 1.45 inches in length, and that also includes the diagonal X stitch in the middle. The measurements we just calculated are the minimal requirements to meet the sewing breakage strength. If the box X stitch looks small on your webbing, simply increase its vertical length. Using a washable marker, we're going to mark the webbing so we know where to sew. Via our calculations, the horizontal stitch will be 3 quarter inches in length and the vertical stitches will be 1.45. We're going to make them a little bit bigger here, so we measured 1 and a half inches. These two marks on the webbing will make it easy for us to follow the requirements for the breakage strength of our sewing. To achieve the 1600 pound sewing breaking strength that we desire, we need to set our stitch length to get eight stitches per inch. We will begin sewing on the mark we just made on the webbing about an eighth inch from the edge. We will sew forward about three stitches, then in reverse three stitches. Then we will sew to the opposite side of the webbing, stopping about an eighth inch from the edge. There we will bury our needle, lift our presser foot, and rotate the webbing, lower our presser foot, and then we will sew only one stitch and pivot in the same manner to create a parallel stitch to the first. Sew to the opposite side and stop at the same starting point. Bury the needle, lift the foot, and rotate the webbing, 
lower the foot and sew the first diagonal stitch of the X stitch to the marked corner on the opposite end. This stop point is always about an eighth inch from the outside edge of the webbing. Now sew along the marked line to the opposite side and stop. Pivot on the needle like you did before and create a diagonal stitch finishing the X to the next corner. Bury the needle at the corner lifting the foot and pivoting the webbing so you can sew down the vertical edge about an eighth inch away from the edge. And stop just under the horizontal stitch about one stitch away so you can make a parallel stitch alongside it. When you reach the other side, pivot again. Now we will sew up the other side of the webbing to where we started sewing and then we'll do some reversing just like what was done in the beginning. Now the box X stitch is complete. We're going to use Sailrite's battery operated thread burner. This will remove the excess thread and seals the ends of the thread. If you don't have this, you can use scissors. Our tubular webbing was designed to handle 2,700 pounds before breaking, and our stitch was designed to handle 1,600 pounds. So we want our stitch to break before the webbing does. And as you've seen in the test at the beginning, that's exactly what happens. It breaks at 1,800 pounds. So this exceeds our expectation of building a stitch that will withstand 1,600 pounds. That broke the stitching, 8.1 kilonewtons. That is not 8,100 pounds or 1,800 pounds of force. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, be sure to contact us at Sailrite. Thanks for watching.